Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. My name is Noah Ruiz. I am a designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week, master editor himself, Pedro. What's going on, everybody? I'm Pedro. I'm creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. Yes, this is the show where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects. How's everybody doing? We are hanging out in the Discord server, so if you want to come chat with us during the show, or even after the show, we're hanging out in the live broadcast channel. Shout out to everybody. Good morning or good afternoon, good evening, all that good stuff. We're going to run through some housekeeping stuff um, and then we'll get into the show. It normally takes about 10 minutes, so if you want to fast forward through it, you can, but you'll miss the coupon code. So jump into the coupon code? Yeah. yeah. All right. Coupon code this today, this week, it's dot matrix. So if you want to check out anything in the Adafruit shop, you can use coupon code dot matrix and uh, save 10% off your order. Works with everything in the shop except for the gift certificates and the subscriptions to Adabox. Speaking of Adaboxes, we have some really nice delivery options, especially for the folks in New York City. We have same day delivery, so that's an option if you guys wanna check that out. And you are in New York, you probably should be in New York. Um, check out the same day delivery. We have some freebie deals going on every single day here. Uh, so you can check out adafruit.com slash free and see all the different tiers for orders that are $99 or more. You can get the Perma Proto half size breadboard. That's this white board here. Very, very nice and high quality. For orders that are $200 or more, you can get the Perma Proto plus UPS ground shipping, continental US only. And for orders that are $299 or more, you can get the Perma Proto, UPS ground shipping, and a free Circuit Playground Express. All that and more. Check it out. How many freebies can you get? All of them. Very cool. They get automatically added to your cart, so you don't have to put any, uh, re uh, what is it called, redeem codes or anything. Very cool. Adafruit's jobs board has been out, and it's smashing success. If you are a maker looking for a maker-type job, or if you're an employer looking for a maker, um, check out the jobs board. There's uh, available for hire folks. Uh, you can filter through here. We've got a nice video as well from the CS team. Shout out Jesse May. And here are all the listings. So if you are indeed looking for some more work, uh, you can post up your resume or your job, um, your job uh, listing. There's a lot. You can sort through them, which is great. All right, so check that out. Hmm. Let's see what else. We have newsletters, adafruitdaily.com. Where is this one? Adafruitdaily.com, you can subscribe to individual categories of newsletters, happen once a week. You can also check the archive too at Adafruit Daily. Uh, the latest one being, is it, was it Make Code? Mm -hmm. Well, our uh, favorite one, it's probably the CircuitPython one. So check out, if you are indeed interested in CircuitPython, which you should be, check out the CircuitPython newsletter at Adafruitdaily.com. You have to manually subscribe to it. We don't uh, automatically do that if you have an Adafruit account. It's a separate site. That way you, you can't be spammed or anything. So. You're safe. We mentioned briefly we're in the Discord chat room. Howdy, everybody. In the Discord chat, we have Yanni. We have Poppy. Pet Poppy, I think. And Dao20. Heidi, Heidi Du. Yeah, what's up? We got Duester. We got Dan A in the YouTube chat. YouTube as chat. well as Ahmed. And over on the Facebook. It's just us. And Twitch. <laughs> Yeah, hey everybody. Hanging out all in the chats there. Cool. Thank you all for joining us this beautiful Wednesday morning. Yeah. How's the weather out there? Yeah, let us know what part of the world you guys are tuning in from in the comments. Yeah. I said this would take 10 minutes, but boy golly, did we rush through it. It's only five minutes in. Yeah, let's go ahead and, and jump into this jump in? I know, I said, how's the weather? Well, this is a weather-based project. This week we put together a really sweet Pi Titano project. This is a collaboration project with Liz Clark, or better known as D Blitz City DIY. Check her out on Instagram and YouTube. We have links and stuff. But uh, this is the project. It's a 3D printed case for the Pi Portal Titano. Right now, I have it loading on a battery, but ideally, you want to have this guy plugged into your computer or wall adapter. We got stuff on the side, right? This is USB-C, which is nice. It's a pretty cool cable. It's a ribbon cable. We'll talk about that more later. Two software, two hardware buttons at the top here. What are these buttons for? They're for snooze and dismiss because this has programmed alarms and reminders. It's very, very cool. So you can have two different types of alarms. You can have uh, one that happens every day. So let's say you want to do an alarm for a reminder to when to eat, when to drink water, when to take medicine, that sort of stuff. 
you can program in that you can program those times in and it also has a weekly reoccurring one so let's say you want to take out the trash on a Friday at 7 p.m. or 7 p.m. or a.m. that's all possible here because uh, it's written in circuit Python so with the original Pi portal the classic version it has uh, 320 by 240 resolution. This guy's got 480 by 320. Double the pixels, a lot more real estate on the screen to show things like the actual date. So we have the date there, time over there, and we also have, um, we have the ability to display special holidays, special days like today, which is 3D Hangouts, live today as you can see here. These fonts were custom generated. Um, it's a dot matrix type font. So you have full control to create your own bitmap fonts. We have a learn guide on how to do so. It's kind of easy. Um, you can change the colors of the fonts, change the sizes of the fonts as well. And then we came up with these really nice retro graphic 8-bit style icons, really, for all the different weather conditions. So that was fun. Um, if you live in a city that's a little bit, uh, maybe has more than 12 characters, just be a note of that. You can adjust that, though, which is really fun to do. Uh, West Palm Bay. <laughs> West Palm is Bay. Uh, scattered clouds, clouds, it's 75F right now. Um, you get a little bit of a flicker here with the, the refresh rate on the camera, but it looks really good in real life. And uh, the colors are popping too, so it's really sweet. So, I have some alarms set up. And they're gonna trigger at 11.10. So I have three minutes to, to kill. <laughs> uh, so we put together a learn guide that you guys can check out. So if you head on over to learn.adafruit.com, you can see learn guide we just published it yeah so check it out we also have two videos for you uh, we put together a little kind of project overview video which is like two minutes long and a really good explanation of the code itself by Liz Clark put it on our YouTube channel we're really nicely well done check out the humors on point so you can check that out it's all listed there uh, we have some parts lists for you it, again it's using the, por the Pi portal Titano it's bigger it's got more pixels we're also using these Stemma buttons, which have these Stemma connectors on it, and there's Stemma connectors on the back or the side of the Pi Portal, Pi Portal Titano, and all of the Pi Portals. Those allow us to plug and play these components, so there's really no soldering required. We also have a mini oval speaker that just makes the sound much more amplified. That plugs into a little Pico connector on the back as well, so everything really is plug and play here. Super cool. So if you're looking for a project that uh, doesn't need any soldering, you can do this because it's all plug and play. Most of the stuff is indeed in stock. There are some things you are going to want like an SD card. There are so many fonts, there's so many sound effects, there's so many bitmaps that we ran out of space. You have an eight megabyte flash, internal flash storage on the Pi Portal Titano and the Pi Portal and the Pi Portal Pint. So we, we ran out of space pretty quickly because there's like over 50 icons for the weather. So, well, we need an SD card. There's, an SD, there's a micro SD card slot on the Pi Portal, Titano, all of them. Uh, so you can use this one. I recommend getting this one because it's, it's a speedy one. The one I have is a little bit slow. This is class 10, right? I think mine's like a class three because the bitmaps load pretty slow. So that's good to know. Get a nice speedy SD card. We carry it, it's out of stock, but you can sign up to no get notified when we have them in stock or you might have one laying around. Some other things, we sell some hardware kits um, in order to get the buttons. Uh, nicely installed on top. We have the standoff screw kit uh, for M25 size um, hardware. It's nylon, uh, black nylon, so made it for black. Works really well. It's got all the different sizes of... It's time for the coupon yes. code. There we go. <laughs> so today's coupon code is indeed dot matrix. A little piggy right there. Piggy piggy. So you have the option to snooze, dismiss. Uh, you, of course you can touch the screen. Let's say I want to snooze it. I need to press it harder. With your nail. With my nail. There we go. And then you can see the nice refresh rate. It's so uh, 80s, right? The refresh rate is like bringing me back to when the website you <laughs> used to load like that. Anyway, I dismissed it, so it's going to come back. If you prefer clickiness, you can click these buttons up here. Um, snooze is on this side and dismiss is on this side. You can also swap out the color caps if you'd like. Um, so it's going to come back, I think, and I also have a reoccur- it, this is a reoccurring alarm, so it'll come back. Even though I hit snooze, too. You have complete control over how long you want your intervals for your snooze to be. I believe it's set to a minute or three minutes or something. I forget, but it's in there. 
Um, yeah, so thank you for the reminder of the coupon code. We're still working through the parts. There are some other machine screws that I have listed here. There's some M3 screws. Uh, those are for uh, securing the Pi port itself to the screen plate. Um, but it does have snap fits, and I'll show those to you in a little bit. These cables, I'm not sure if you all know about these cables. These are DIY USB ribbon cables. These are really nice. They're, they're meant for like, like super embedded stuff, like, like custom drones and stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have two different connector types. We have, um, so they're the bare PCB with just the connector. There's none of that plastic uh, kind of gunk in, around it. It's, it's really, really low profile. They come in different um, orientations as well. So uh, this is the USB-C connector. And we also have the, uh, the ribbon cable here. They come in different lengths and sizes. This is the 50 centimeter one. Um, but they uh, also work with HDMI um, connectors. So the, ribbon, the same ribbon cable that works with our HDMI connectors works with the USB. So here's a great example of it. And that's what I'm using in this project. Uh, Pedro's got it on the overhead. So let's go ahead and take a look at the overhead. I really like the way these latch on. So on the side, there's these two little latches and it lets you take out the little cable there. So assemblies like that. I'm gonna do some manual focusing here. Get closer. There you go. Yeah, so these are really great. If you have something that needs to have a low profile connector, this is the way to go. You don't have to like, I remember having to like skin a connect, an HDMI cable mm -hmm. to get my, my HDMI cable to fit my Raspberry Pi thing. And uh, this, this would have worked out so good. So you have some really short options. You have some longer options too. I'm using the 50 millimeter version here. And you even have some right angled and some, what is it, 90 degree and yeah. 180 degree. Right, and they're all listed in the Learn Guide. You can check it out. I mean, in the products pages, you can check them out. They're just, just search for DIY USB and those will come up right away. We also have different lengths of these as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, so we have one USB-C connector, um, which I am using right now. And there's like two left in stock, so if you want to get yours. Uh, yeah, so this works out really well. It's super thin, uh, so that works well. I got my battery back here. Again, I recommend plugging this into the wall adapter or your computer, uh, but I have this big beefy battery in there, and uh, it's easy to take it out and stuff. But uh, yeah, uh, I guess the snooze is like over a couple minutes because it hasn't reminded me yet. So there we go. USB cables. Those are fun. Ba, 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 ba. Over here. Okay, back to the learn guide. Those are all the parts. I believe I walked through most of the, the ones that are notable. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're gonna ro run into the circuit diagram, plug and play, right? So, um, <laughs> it's fun because it's just like, yeah, this plugs in here. So you can see where the speaker goes. It's got a little, little port for it. It's a speaker right on, on, the, on the solder mask. And then uh, you have uh, D4 and D3, um, which are the three pin JSD connectors. So uh, those, those plug in directly into the stemma buttons. These stemma buttons here, they're like groove connectors, a little bit different than ours. We don't have a fritzing object for it, so I'm just using that one. If you wanna pick, if you wanna create your own wiring diagrams, we have our fritzing parts available in a GitHub library that's linked right here. So you can get those right there. Also have a link to the Fritzing open source software, free download if you want to create these wiring diagrams. Um, check it out, it's free to download and it works across the platforms. As far as the connections are, um, I just went through them. So that's pretty, pretty good. All right, here's the real, real stuff, the real goods here. So the software, it's all written in CircuitPython. Um, you definitely want to check, uh, update your PyTitano to the latest version of CircuitPython. Currently it's uh, 5.0 with uh, beta three, I believe. So check it out. The first page is gonna walk you through if you haven't updated your, your, uh, your, your Pi Titano in a while. It's fairly new, so I'd imagine it's pretty updated. I'm sure it comes with beta zero. It shipped with beta zero, so you might want to update it to beta three. Um, yeah, so this walks you through uh, exactly how to get that UF2 file into, uh, into your Pi portal so you can update your CircuitPython. We also have a nice handy link of the default files. If something happens, you can download the default files that shipped with the PyPort of Titano. Uh, I think it just ships with the quotes um, and a couple libraries. Speaking of libraries. Code. Yeah, so there's a recurring. Let's go ahead and do the hardware button. I'll hit this one here, dismiss. Hit that and get that lovely doo -doo -doo. I'm sure this will be faster with a class 10 SD card. I'm sure. 
I should have asked Liz, hey, does your, <laughs> does yours go this low too? Yeah. All right, so we get the coupon code again. So uh, this is kind of like your stock um, library bundle. Like these are all the libraries that normally all the PyPortal projects use. It's, it's just a bunch of them, but they're kind of needed. Um, library for the ESP32, uh, requests, uh, the PyPortal itself, touchscreen, Adafruit IO, cursor stuff, image loads, list goes on, bitmaps. There's not over, I was gonna say, there's over 100 libraries. There is for CircuitPython, but this one uses just a handful here because there's a lot going on. So we, uh, Liz rather, she put together all the assets for folks uh, on GitHub so everyone can download all the bitmaps uh, using this link here, the project zip. That one should give you all of the assets. Lots of icons, a couple sound effects, lots of bitmaps and fonts. So you can check this out, view it on GitHub. If you find an issue, please post an issue for us and let us know that there's something. We've tested it pretty good, but there's, some, there's always some edge cases to, to, to hit. Um, but here it is. It is lovely and commented as well. So check it out. Um, definitely check out Liz's video. She really breaks down visually and verbally how it's working, where you want to go if you want to change things, which is pretty, pretty dang good. So I'm going to scroll down and if you need some visual reference as to what your circuit Pi drive should look like, this screenshot will give you an idea of where all the files go. You have your fonts in your fonts folder. Again, these fonts are generated bitmaps. We have a standalone guide that's linked in this guide that shows you how to create your own font. So if you're not liking the, the, uh, the, the dot matrix font, you can create your own, which is really great. Create your own sizes as well. Um, yeah, the other required libraries are in another uh, folder called lib. This is all the libraries, um, 13 of them, it says. So there's a lot of them. Your SD card, your SD card only contains the image, the icons for the weathers, <laughs> the weather conditions. Uh, so that's really where you want to stuff your icons. I, I recommend getting that class 10, again, for speediness. Uh, you can be whatever, I guess eight gigabytes is fine. It's a lot, which is great. And then you want to double check everything, right? So make sure you got all the stuff, all your wave files are where they're supposed to be. That's what these screenshots are for. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, and then we can walk through the code little by little here. Your secrets file, if you've ever done a PyPortal project, you'll know that your secrets file is a way to kind of uh, hide your, your, uh, your, your Wi-Fi network, your password, and some of your tokens, your keys for all the different services that you might be working with. In this case, you're gonna need um, the Open Weather Maps API token that you can get for free by signing up. Um, and you also wanna use your Adafruit IO username and Adafruit IO key. We walk, you we walk you through how to get those as well. And uh, there's a little link here for uh, getting your location. So it's in the secrets. If you wanna change the weather location, you just change it in the secrets file here. So right now it's set to New York City, or just New York. Uh, but if you're not quite sure what your city ID is, there's a, lit a list linked here. Yeah, linked here. Okay, so the calendar.py file is named appropriately. It's really where uh, you set up your alarms, your timers, and the holidays, those special days. So you can see here we have bed, uh, just typed out as bed, breakfast, lunch, dinner, trash. You can add your own or just modify these if you want. Um, when you modify these, you'll want to also modify them in the code.py that's like referencing them. So just keep that in mind. But if you walk through this and read through it, you will understand how they're all connected and working together. Uh, the holidays or like set up as strings here, so you can just type it out, whatever you want to say. Um, yeah, so there's a couple kind of preset ones in here. Just give you an idea of what holidays uh, you, can, uh, you can play with. Sweet, and there's just news time, which is, I guess, 300 seconds. Yeah. And that's the calendar file. Nice and easy to, uh, to add your own and modify the existing ones. Yeah, the, uh, the trash one is the once a week one. As you see here, it says Friday. It's abbreviated to fry, and then the, uh, the time, and you can set whether it's AM or PM. Very cool. The open weather graphics, it's kind of its own library, really, the way it's handling and, uh, yeah, the way it's handling all of the, the fonts and where they're supposed to be displayed, what color they are, all that sort of stuff. So you can walk through here and get a better idea of, uh, of all the stuff. Yeah, and here are the holiday check-ins here, making sure that all the dates it's looking for all the, the, the month days and the weekdays. 
Cool. This is a little uh, bitmap that is kind of a boot, boot splash page. You check that out. Here's the class for the entire uh, open weather graphics. So definitely read through it if you want to get more understanding of it. I'm just kind of rushing through it right now because, uh, yeah, it's almost, it's almost half hour in. Very cool. So let's go to the code actual. How, now that we've done all the setup, now we can kind of get an idea of what the, the loop is looking like. So you set up all your, uh, your libraries. <laughs> we're getting Wi-Fi details. Our location is over here. It's set in the secrets. Here's where we're pulling the data from. The API is from Open Weather Maps. So check it out there. OK. And um, Liz did a great job explaining all this stuff. I'm doing a terrible job. <laughs> Here's where the WAV files are stored, the alarm sound file locations. You could just search for it in the code.py file and uh, add your own or modify them. Uh, the way I created mine was just using this text-to-speech uh, feature that these Macs have. And I set it to like a retro uh, voice, which you can do in your system prefs. Yeah. Here's the alarm sound checks. When you're, when you're adding your own, you want to make sure that uh, it matches up with the array here. Yeah. And then uh, here with the, uh, the actual bitmaps for the alarms. You have full control over how big they are, how they look like, and where they're stored. There's three of them there. The meal alarm is kind of like a grouped one. So it's whether you have uh, breakfast, dinner, or lunch, all that's in the sort of the group here. So it's displaying the same. Um, the same bitmap alarm, which is a good way to do it. It's a really good idea. Keeps it simple, yeah. OK, here are the snooze controls. Um, these kind of set up where the touch coordinates are, where on the screen you want to touch to dismiss it. Um, I really like the hardware buttons, because in some cases, the uh, touch screen might not be as calibrated as you'd like. So hardware buttons for the win. Mm-hmm. <laughs> OK, and then the dismiss controls are here as well. So everything's really broken down. It is so thorough and excellent. So check it out. You get a really, if you're really new to Python, this, this gives you a really good crash course into, uh, into it. Sweet. Here are the hardware buttons setting that up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. OK, here we're getting the, the fun stuff, state machines. So you can walk through all the, the fun states and checks that it has to do. Is it, is it time? Not yet. So check it out. <laughs> you got any questions? In the <clears throat> yeah, so Dueo20 is asking on the Discord, how hard would it be to rework this to work with a regular Pi Portal? I don't think it'd be too, too much. You just have to scale down the graphics? Yeah, scale down the bitmaps. So if you have some um, Photoshop skills or GIMP skills, you'll want to do that. Um, and then just look through all the different uh, coordinates and see how to reshift everything. Yeah, just some of the labels won't fit, right? So like the original weather station for the original Pi portal, uh, it doesn't have date because I don't think there's enough space for it. So uh, yeah, you'll have to just kind of cut back on, on some or abbreviate it. In the code, you can, you can specify a, a label uh, how many glyphs are max. So it'll just kind of cut it off so it doesn't you know, trail all the way. So that, yeah, it should be, give it a go. I think you'll have fun with it. It's a good challenge. So that's the code. Again, definitely check out Liz's video. She walks it through so good. <laughs> when it comes to 3D printing, um, all the parts are designed to print with any, without any support material. Uh, that's my kind of thing. That's my jam. Uh, uh, the front and the back snap fit, so it's easy to kind of crack it open and get to things if you need. I left the back open, so if we wanted to add more components, we can totally do so. That's why this back here is out there. And there's so much room in there, you can put other things in there, like a battery. Yeah, and then there's where the, the things are. So if you need to access any of the ports, so if you could just hit the reset button's right there. So uh, that's there. Um, if you want to do, uh, if you want to modify the CAD or create a new enclosure that's custom to whatever, uh, we have the Pi Portal Titano and all of the Pi Portal um, CAD files available in different formats. So if you want to use a step file um, or a STL, we have those for you. We also have the Fusion 360 file, which has all the, the original sketches and all that sort of things. I, I put them up on different places, the CAD files themselves. They're on Thingiverse, of course, but also Colts 3D, which is a great place, and Prusa printers. 
So you can check this out there. Um, I'm using Cura to slice, but you could use whatever your, your preferred slicing software is. Um, I like using these settings here, a little bit hotter than normal, like 220 for the extruder. Um, I like gyroid infill, and the speed's pretty minimal at 60 millimeters, heated bed. Um, yeah. Uh, Yuda on the YouTube chat was asking where are all the 3D parts so you could better design a PCB. He was looking for the connectors and the USB oh. stuff. So I linked him to the uh, GitHub CAD parts that we have. Right. You can pull them from there. Uh, I'm slowly building a library of just those connectors as you're talking about um, in like a, in a separate GitHub repo because mm -hmm. uh, I think it makes sense to do that. Um, yeah, I'll get back with you on that. That's a good uh, thing. I should have those connectors themselves. Um, but a great place to get them is GrabCAD. I do a lot of parts too. I, I kind of draw up a lot of the parts using the data sheets and I put them up there as well on GrabCAD. So you can probably find some, some of the things that I've drawn up there. But yeah, GrabCAD's great. If you don't have an account to GrabCAD, make one and, and search their stuff. Um, they have a lot of connectors. I, I source a lot of my parts from there too. And then LXT Lim on the YouTube chat is asking, is there a release schedule for CircuitPython? I don't believe there is. It's just when it's... Whenever we're ready. Yeah. When everything's all nice and yeah. uh, bug-free. Yeah. As much as we can make it. Yeah, right. Okay. I mean, the rest of the pages is all hardware stuff, like how to assemble the buttons and just walk you through it. These are all the hardware screws. Again, that's why I suggest getting that. Um, the M25 nylon okay. standoff kit because it has everything you need uh, to set this thing up. I think it's really nice to, you know, have hardware like standoffs instead of building it into the 3D print. You could always change them out in case you want to do different um, depths and stuff. So it just really walks you through like setting up all the screws and things for this uh, this little this little button thing. Now I like doing separate pe separate pieces. Um, just because it saves you on printing. If the tolerances are off, hey, you just print that one module as opposed to printing this case that takes like five or six hours to print, if you're lucky. <laughs> so that's why I have this kind of separated. It's, it's, uh, it also adds the stability to it. So when you press it, it's not all floppy. It's like really, really nicely secured. So I like that. And uh, it's easy to open it uh, and, and install it with the, with the screws. So. Now the Titano doesn't snap fit because it has some really nice mounting hole tabs, tabs with mounting holes on them. So that's what I'm using here. Um, and then the M3 screws uh, to secure them into the built-in standoffs because this one kind of needed some, the screen cover anyway, it needed a, a custom uh, height of those standoffs. So uh, that's why I uh, opted into there. When you're creating a design, you don't want to show the screws. You got to put a little bit more effort into uh, you know, where the screws are going to be hidden so that's what the screen. That's why these are built in, and then that screen cover gets secured to um, the face plate, which is the light gray colored thing that's in the front that has those chunky bezels, right? Uh, so uh, that could snap fit. I could even glue in, but I opted in for screws because there's plenty of room for screw tabs. So that's why I added those there. Let's see. Then uh, these plug in. <laughs> you want to make sure they plug into the right one. So like D4 should be on the left side. Is that what it says? Yeah, just fall through it and you'll know which one is wrong. Or if you get them wrong, you can always just in the code update D3 and D4. Speaker, just plug it in. Yeah. Um, yeah, press fits open. I, I can't wait to crack this open. And then uh, the speaker has a little holder on the side of the case um, that just press fits in there. These speakers come with a little sticky adhesive backing. Um, I never use it though because like, I always have press fit stuff. And then the back cover, it's installed. That's really it. We might want to add another page called Usage. We'll see what happens. And is going to do some copy edits a little bit later. But uh, we wanted to get it out to you guys so you can get started setting up your Pi Portal, Titano, and your 3D prints. Yeah, awesome. Got a lot of people eager to print this out. Looks like Duester actually already has his printed out. <laughs> One of the uh, awesome. Pi Portal uh, Titano cases. Very cool. Very, very cool. Yay. It is a little bit different than the one that we did previously, just because it has those hardware buttons. Can I switch my camera? Yeah, so you have these guys. That's kind of the only difference right now. Um, but everything is kind of the same. 
I didn't even add my little feet here, but these little divots here, they're four feet. If you want to have rubber feet or screw them in or something, you could do that. Um, if you really want to, you could screw, you can drill holes into here and kind of make your own, your own mounting mechanism. But yeah, so this pops out. This is the battery. We sell this battery pack as well. Here's where the speaker is. So if you wanted to you know, crack this open, it opens pretty nicely. Now you'll see that my, uh, my cable is pretty short, so this just pops out like that. And there you go, there's your, tor your Titano. So disassembled. Yes, yeah. there's that. Um, this is a really nice, like, we, like the Mar didn't cheap out on getting this component here. It has that spring in there, so. Ooh. Yeah, a lot of the cheaper boards, like the Pi Zero, mm -hmm. it's like you just stick it just in. Slide it in, <laughs> a little press fit. Yeah, five dollars for a reason. So uh, the snaps are just on these edges here, you'll see there. There's the snap, and then here's the little catchers here. They're only on the edges there, here and here. So fun. This design is working out really well for lots of projects. So fine that it's going to look exactly the same when we come up to the prototype meeting segment. That's right. <laughs> There's where the SD card is. You can get your finger in there and have access to it right there, right there. <laughs> Again, I want to recommend getting a class 10 card. This is what, class one or something? Class four. Ooh, I wonder it's so slow. Yikes. I'm pretty sure that's why it's so slow when it's drawing the bitmaps. <laughs> it's so funny the way it's, it's like that. All right, and that just press fits in there like that. Yeah, just kind of holds it in there. Hey, cool. Yeah. Okay, we got a uh, comment over here on the YouTubes from Eunice. Is that how you pronounce your name? Eunice Can. Hello. He thinks this is not live. <laughs> really? <laughs> this isn't live. Why not? And then over on the Discord chat, which you should definitely join Eunice. We are 24-7 live in there. Check, it out, check us out in the live broadcasting. Uh, Devo is asking to continue the uh, Tinkercad or CAD software series. You do have a layer by layer series um, that comes up when people have like recommendations on some of the yeah. CAD stuff. So yeah, those we'll are fun. Uh, so we have a, la a layer by layer playlist. I mm -hmm. think it's in the description. If not, you can find it in the Adafruit YouTube or in the Adafruit blog. Just search for layer by layer, and uh, the last we one have you over did, 100, I think. Last thing you did was on creating circular snap fit. Yeah, uh, for the geometry for that ornament. Yeah, look how nice and slow it's loading. <laughs> this is great. So it's pulling in the data. Um, oh man, I wish I had this plugged into my computer that I could show you the REPL. The REPL shows you, it, this, it grabs like so much data from weather maps, uh, uh, humidity, visibility, wind speed. If you're a surfer and you wanted to make like a custom like surfing weather thing, mm -hmm. you could totally uh, modify this to work with that. It's where it only displays the weather data that's you know valuable to you. Yeah. Uh, what other like flying weather? I guess you can get. So yeah. you can totally play around Wind with speed, it. All that. In the REPL, you li you literally see all the data from that location that you you specified, and it'll just give it all to you. And then it's up to you whether you want to display it or not. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun to see West Palm Bay. Yes, yeah, sailing says uh, LXT uh, LIM. What's that? Sailing, like sailing for uh, gotcha. Yeah, if you want uh, to sail, ocean sailing weather, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, very sweet. And uh, you can mount it in all sorts of different ways. You can have it mounted on a wall, or whatever. Uh, for a accessibility standpoint, if you have a loved one that you want to set up custom reminders for, like when to take certain medications <laughs> and things, it's you can have fun with it and uh, record your own sound effects, record yeah. your own whatever. It's, it's so amazing. You can create, you can, Phil had a really fun idea, like creating your own Kama, Tamagotchi pet yeah. out of this, where it, it tells you it needs to be fed and you click the button to feed it or something. <laughs> so you can <laughs> do all sorts of fun stuff with it. So I hope this inspires y'all to, uh, to start thinking a little bit differently about the, these IoT projects. Huh. Yeah, Devo says, about getting the weather conditions on Mars, so it doesn't have to be on Earth. <sighs> <laughs> they have weather, open weather maps, Mars edition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wherever you can get your your uh, your JSON data, you can display it. And then Devo or uh, Duoster is saying that he used to work at M3 and got hundreds of different rubber feet at uh, one of the company yard sales. Yeah, nice, tons of rubber feet for days, for months. 
Yes, yeah. Nematron is on the YouTube chat saying that he's going to get his daughter into all this stuff. Yes, this is definitely recommended. Uh, yeah. Nice. Children always have really good ideas, something that you, <laughs> that you never think of. So yeah. It's really cool to get all the kids involved. Right. And it's safe, no soldering. You just plug in these buttons. And then Yanni is suggesting having a snap fit power bank holder. That's, That's a good idea. I, I wasn't thinking that this. Yeah, I didn't but think that for was demos, anything. like you kind of want to be able to move yeah. around, so yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, there's plenty of room in there. There's so much room, and you have access to the reset button really quick if you ever need to. Yeah, that's a good idea. Good. So your uh, clock can have backup power. Yeah. Yep. We also have another one um, that's themed out for Star Trek. You want to check that one out? That one's for the classic. Um, can I grab it. <laughs> sure. We'll be twinning over here. So that was uh, a collab project with Dave Estelle's. He uh, wanted to make his own alarm clock as well. Although this one has... Uh, oh yeah, this one's powered by the uh, barrel. Yeah, I don't know if it has a battery in it. It does not. Look at that, it's, it's old. Yeah, and it has like this, this really cool snooze button that we, uh, that we, what did we do? We pre-cutted that, the mm -hmm. speaker's on top. This is before we had the mini oval speaker. I swear this sounds so good, as you yeah. probably heard it. It's really loud. Yeah. Yeah, that one has some screws. I, I wanted to oh, make everything no, snap. I do have a battery fit. in there. Oh, oh, I forgot. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to have a little bit different design, That's not so snap fit, this is all held together with screws. Yeah. You can go that route as well. Yep, yep. And let's see, is, is there enough battery juice in here to pull uh, weather data? Yeah. Just for a little bit. Did you expose the, uh, the light sensor on yours? No. <laughs> you did yours. Yeah, you exposed your light sensor. That's cool. So it, it, this one's really interesting. This one will change the colors depending on if it's dark. Like it'll dim the screen. Mm. Nice work on that one, Dave. Yeah, so you can see they're, they're different. You can have different, completely different fonts, completely different look and feel of it. Your you can change your that. alarm there, which is pretty neat, nifty. That's you can Muggsy. even have yeah. some Muggsy integration. Yeah, that's that. actually shipping soon. I, I checked oh, up on their wow. Kickstarter. I was oh, like, nice. I wonder when it's coming out. It's like, so cool. we're shipping. Another alarm set too. Oh, wow. Alarm's going to go off uh, pretty soon. Oh, wait, no, it already went off. Yeah, <laughs> it already went off. Yeah, so there you go. Yes, L cars. Yeah, that's the interface. Shout outs to Dave stuff for that. Yeah, sweet. Very right, cool. cool. Hey, look at that. I got two twin in ones. Sweet. All right, let's All go right. ahead and <laughs> jump into this week's What Are We Prototyping? I don't know who's going first. You um, let's change it up. Continue with this Do you design. want to? I do need the battery. Oh, OK. So this is, it looks kind of the same, but you notice there's something different on it. It has a plant on the inside of it. <laughs> pet planter, IoT smart pet planter. We're just trying to come up with a name for it. All right, let's turn it on. Pi Portal Titano, written in Circuit Python, using Adafruit I/O to plot data. It's using a Stemma soil sensor. It's right here. It's built into there. You notice, like, where is the stem? It is nicely hidden inside of the uh, of the actual cup here, the pot, the planter. This is displaying a, a bitmap of roots. It's connecting right now and pulling. It, this, it animates, displays the water level. This little guy here with the icon 520, that's the value of the water, and that's the temperature of, well, the soil. And uh, when it gets too low, it'll let you know. It'll say, I'm, dry, or it'll say, uh, I, I'm thirsty, I need more <laughs> water, because it's got the speaker on the side. When the water is too low, wait, I just said that. When the water's too high, it'll say, I'm drowning. Y'all, you put too much water on me. You need to help me out. So, uh, <laughs> This is a special type of plant. It's a uh, Venus flytrap. You can't just give it regular water or it'll die. So um, it's a kind of a special plant. You can get these at your local hardware store, I think. That's where we got ours. It has a special drip tray in here that snap fits, which uh, it has a good snap fit. So it hasn't fallen apart yet, so you can catch the water. Water and electronics, you know, we got to be really careful here so we don't have a pump feeding it water. You still have to manually water it, but at least you'll know how much you've watered it. All this data is being plotted to Adafruit I.O. So you can get a chart of uh, you know, how, how long it takes the water to uh, get low or is it too high, all that sort of stuff. And it's just pulling uh, the soil sensor every whatever seconds I set to it. 
But uh, it, again, it's using a fairly new um, soil sensor designed by Lamar. It's a capacitive-based soil sensor. It's actually really good. So here it is. It has a Stemma connector right there. So it literally plugs in to the Pi Titano. Um, silk screen by Phil B, Paint Your Dragon. So it's really, really nice. It's got a chip right on there. And um, it's already pre-programmed for you. So it works with CircuitPython, Raspberry Pi, an Uno, a Nano, a Lulu. <laughs> it works with everything, which is great. It's I squared C. So that's what's inside here. It's like nested in there nicely. Uh, and I made it in a way where it only, only this piece, the green stuff, is in the soil. The rest of this is like outside, so it's not getting wet. Mm -hmm. I think I did a good job on that, and a uh, pretty smart uh, idea, clever idea, rather, to uh, display the root system there. Instead of like a little face, we were thinking originally, yeah, let's put a little face there, and it'll be happy and be sad. But uh, I think the root system works pretty well. Looks good. Yeah. LXT LIM on the YouTube chat is suggesting the name Pi Plant Tino. Pi, Pi Plant. Plant Titano. Pi, Pi Plant, Plant Tano. Titano. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking of naming it like Vanessa or something. Because <laughs> Close to Venus flytrap. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the, the thing opened. Remember last night I was playing with it and I accidentally snapped it. Yeah. And I touched it and like, anyway, we need to find some bugs and feed it. It eats <laughs> bugs, by the way. It's a, yeah, it's a flytrap. Um, Devo at, is uh, suggesting adding some servos to feed it some tasty bugs. <laughs> yeah. And then Dual Wester is uh, suggesting maybe uh, some hot glue to waterproof the electronics. It's a good idea too. That is a good idea. Um, we're, we're testing it, you know. So far, we don't need any glue, but uh, I, I like the idea of insulating um, the outer part here. But if you, man, if I could take this apart and show it to you, I think I kind of can. We're going to plug you for just a second. So if you need to get in there, you just pop, you just you just get your nail in there. Nope, I got it. Just pop that open there. And uh, you get your reset button if you want. But there's the stem and soil sensor. You see this little cutaway, right? It, it reveals just the electronics and the, and the connector, but the rest of the goods is actually in the soil, which is great. And then this drip tray here will make sure that uh, you can cap the water. So uh, yeah, it's also parametric, right? We wanted to make it parametric so we could make a bigger one. It, it's not too hard to. And uh, again, the Stemma connector, the I squared C one is right there. So it's super easy to uh, disconnect it and uh, do some maintenance if you need to. I really wish I had too much water in it so it could be like, I'm drowning. There's too much water. Yeah. So let's plug it in again. And uh, it'll let us know if it's thirsty or not. Yeah, these are like 750, so really nice. Again, it works with all the things. Raspberry Pi, Arduino, and CircuitPython. And then George over on the Discord chat is wondering if there's info on different water levels for common plants. This one's going to be a little bit different since it is a bog type plant. It lives like in, in water. In water. Uh, it is going to be a little bit more higher. You so kinda, you can adjust those variables. Um, yes, you will need to. Variables. You will have to kind of come up with what is too high and what is too low. Mm -hmm. It's easy in the code uh, to, to set a max and a minimum, which is great. That's the way it's set up. And uh, all soil is different, is created differently. This is moss. It's not really soil. It's sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss. Uh, so it's like sponge. So it's super wet right now. And uh, the just max how value it we likes have, it. Yeah, just how it likes it. It likes it wet. Mm -hmm. So some of the things I don't know if you touched up on. I don't know if sure, you please tell lift me. up or pulled up the screenshot of how it's communicating with Adafruit IO. Oh, I can it's just... actually plotting all of this info. So we can sort of make out how long it's actually taken for the water to evaporate, how long we have to go before we have to get some more rainwater or some of that rever reverse osmosis water we're able to give it. Mm -hmm. And we are calling the dashboard for this just planter. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so we got the two gauges here. You can completely modify these with Adafruit IO. So we have a min and a max value here for uh, the wetness or the moisture and the temperature here. And a nice little plotter that kind of plots both of them, and you can see over time um, all the different plots. And you again, you have complete control over when to uh, publish this data uh, to uh, to Adafruit IO. And now you can step into each one of the feeds and get a more thorough look at. I'll go to feeds, view all feeds, and go to moisture, <laughs> and then see them here. You can see when I had it disconnected here from like 
one in the morning <laughs> all the way to like seven in the morning. But you can see here, um, we need to do more data, right? Like we literally just got this planted yeah, and this is all the data that we're getting. Night, actually. So we might, we might have uh, Brent do some more kind of averages because right now it's kind of fluctuating a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, could be because of the sphagnum moss, mm, I don't know. But uh, overall, it's, it's got pretty decent ratings. Like it is wet, <laughs> it is good. And uh, yeah, there it is plotting away. Yeah, and you can get an exact um, idea of when it plotted it and what the value was. So you can do a lot of stuff with this data and the temperature too, but more so uh, the moisture is where we're really focusing on. Mm -hmm. Pretty sweet. Wow. And I've been seeing a good amount of uh, IoT planters too. Yeah, so we just saw one on the Twitter. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this uh, adds a little bit more to that. So it looks yeah. like people are working on their own code. So hopefully we're able to inspire some uh, some of the code that Brent is working on for this. Yeah. Shout out to Brent. He also has two learn guides already that, that uh, oh, uses yeah. the Stemma soil sensor and the, the mm -hmm. Pi portal, the original one. Um, f but it uses different services. So it uses like Microsoft's Azure Cloud and Google's Google I forget the Cloud, there, yeah. whatever Google they call Cloud. it. Um, those are on the Adafruit Learn system as well. If you just search for, uh, I guess, plant, IoT planter. IoT plant. There you go. And here we go. He's got quite a bit of them. He's got the one that uses AWS in CircuitPython, one that uses Microsoft's Azure IoT, and one that uses Google Cloud IoT Core, all oh, with CircuitPython. Python. Very, very cool. One of them actually pumps you the water, gives you the water. This has a pump, so it actually will pump out the water, mm -hmm. which is um, a little daring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I, I really wanted to make it so that the, you see how the, the sensor store just kind of sticks out all the time? Yeah. I really wanted it to like be hidden inside the planter itself. How do you do that and not get the electronics all inside the soil too? I think I did a pretty good thing here. So, uh, I like it. Yeah, thanks. Got a couple suggestions over here on the Discord chat. Another one from uh, Devo saying the BLE phone app controlled the claw. That allows you to grab bugs and feed it. Oh, gosh, <laughs> you turn it into a game now. Yeah, like, all right, cool. time to feed. I like you have a nice big joystick and a big stompy 100 mil arcade button. And then Memetrone on the YouTube chat is uh, wondering if there is a plant metabolism to figure out when the plants like the Venus flytrap needs oh, food. Yeah. I don't know. That's some straight up biosense in there. That's so cool. This senses the capacitance of the water, <laughs> or the, of, the, of the soil. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like, imagine little alligator clips clipped up to the, to the roots or something. Huh. <clears throat> Man, this looks good. The green. Now, cool, so this will be next week's project. Hopefully we get some of the uh, averages ironed out so yeah. we can get some uh, more better uh, data readings for this. Yeah, but just kinda... remember that this will be specifically for like bog type plants that need to be the super values. wet. The yeah. values. But, but it's super easy, easy to change it. Exactly. You will want to do your own, you know, we'll put a big warning. We're not responsible for the death of your plant. But <laughs> you will want to test out your own water levels. What is low and what is high? That's mm -hmm. what I'm kind of figuring out here. So yeah, cool. uh, I'm glad we did it next week because if we did it this week, I, we don't have enough data. We need more data to like figure out is this thing working or not? Mm -hmm. <laughs> My plant going to die? <laughs> All right, continuing on to what are we prototyping? Real last quick, week. segue into the dot oh, matrix. If yeah. you want to get the Titano, it's in stock. Help us out. Help us help you with your maker habits. Dot matrix, it's coupon code, 10% <laughs> off. Can I disconnect this and like plug in the... No. Oh, plug the, this guy back in? Yeah, the weather, because it's today's project. It's kind of heavy with all that water in there. Just notice that. Moving right along into the next prototype. This one's a fun one. This one's pretty. Yeah, Light, so last glowy. week we were showing off the um, Lamara got uh, inspired by that really cool uh, oh, electronic cool. arts project that. Charlin! Charlin put together this amazing, uh, it, it combines a, a laser cut and 3D printed parts to create this really cool um, ring. Mm -hmm. that has a, an embedded um, NeoPixel jewel. I wish I could play the video. There it is. So what's really cool about this is that the black LED acrylic see-through allows the colors to shine through. Yeah. 
And last week we had this NeoPixel uh, shaped um, heart out of NeoPixel strips. Yeah, so it's really cool. There's a, the Gemma case is remixed. It's actually the one that we put together, which is really fun. And uh, here's the stuff, it's from Pla Tap Plastics. It's called ChemCast Black LED Acrylic Sheet. So it, it, it looks opaque, slightly, but mm -hmm. it's like specially designed for like diffusing yeah, NeoPixels. For allowing the uh, lights to shine through, through, yeah. It's got this really cool matte finish as well. Uh, so we picked some up and we literally cut it this morning. We cut it on our other, on our Bantam Tools CMC. Okay, so probably known as Other Mill. Yeah. So here's what it looks like with the uh, NeoPixel strip shape on there. Yeah. So it just looks like red case. And I really like how it looks just, you know, just like a standard black case. Yeah. But when the lights shine through, all of the colors magic. go with it. It's magic. This really looks great. It reminds me of, uh, is it Guy Manuel? Uh -huh. oh, no, no, yeah. it's Thomas Bangler. <laughs> it is uh, kind of death, death punk. punky, huh? Yeah, Thomas. Yeah. So when you turn it off, it's yeah, gone. it's gone. And then so good. Man, this is yeah. such a cool effect for hiding uh, lights or for yeah. doing any like the um, wearables that Charlene was doing. This is a nice little Valentine inspired uh, little project. And I don't have a spudgy here. I don't know if I can take this out. I have this. Let's see if this will work. We also have sheets over here. You can uh, tell them how, uh, how you want them cut so they can come pre-cut for you. Here's the chem cell cast. Mm -hmm. So it's got the protective uh, thing on it. I cut it on, an, uh, like I said, the Bantam tools, formerly known as Other Mill, with a eighth inch end mill, with the upcut single flute. And here's what this little guy looks like. It's just a bunch of NeoPixel strips in an eight by nine grid with the uh, high density mini skinny NeoPixels all nicely soldered on the back there. Showed that off last week. If mm -hmm. you want to take a look at how that was set up. And then this was just milled. Uh, on the yeah. other mill. Yeah, so Made the top side is uh, this frosted sort of mm, textured surface. It feels great, it feels matted. And then you have that traditional glossy, smooth um, surface. So they look the same on both, but if when you're cutting, um, when you're milling, you want to have the tape, your adhesive touch the glossy mm -hmm. side, I think. It's a browsing little effect there. Yeah. So we have a. Uh, our itsy bitsy NRF fifty two eight forty with Bluetooth here, which oh, is yeah, what's yeah. running there, and the cable is our uh, our lovely wire ribbon cable that has silicone um, cover stranded wire. Mm -hmm. And then the with um, well, the, the more, original oh, the, the, like the more you go away, the more like look how beautiful that looks. If you just want that solid look, yeah. or if you really want to see the pixels, just go closer. So cool. Very very sweet material. So the original inspiration was from this was the, was it the... Um, I forgot we did this. I thought we were just going to talk about the black acrylic. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, we were supposed to do this original one was mill out a PCB for this. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to have a mock-up ready to go uh, since we're working on other projects. I thought this would be a little bit more quicker to do, but mm -hmm. the, the resin casted a uh, little freeform sculpture. Sculpture. Yeah. Electronic from, sculpture. From Yuri, he put together like this heart shape, eight bit mm -hmm. looking heart with like a buttload of pixels, all freeform, brass wire, mm -hmm. dead bug soldering, and it looks amazing. It's resin casted. Lamar's like, hey, can we try to do that with, an, with a PCB that's been milled, a custom PCB that's milled, and then these are the uh, 5050 NeoPixel sized. Um, surface mount. This is the first time Pedro surface mounted anything. I haven't done any surface mounting soldering, but he did it. So if we get closer into the guy, I want to show off my horrible camera. soldering job. Go, go on closer. This. <laughs> there we so go. So this was my first try, and closer. definitely want to recommend using the fine tip. Right there. There you go. Uh, I mean, this is. I haven't milled anything in a while, let alone used Eagle CAD. Designed an Eagle CAD, by the way, with the Fusion 360 uh, support. Um, so my end mill was kind of old and dull, so that's why it looks the way it looks. We ran out of um, Scotch Bright. And it's already oxidizing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, this is fun. But hey, you did it again. Yeah. So here's the second try with uh, better bits and better tips for yeah. soldering all that's that. That's right. Together. You changed out your tip, so it's a really nice pointy one. No microscope, just. By hand, I guess. Yeah, I'll, try, I'll actually try to 
uh, solder this live as a demo for uh, two weeks when this little guy is released. So actually waiting on the resin to cast this. This should be a nice little fun project. Yeah. Single-sided, so, you know, it's a lot easier to cut. It takes like three minutes to cut, which is crazy. I'm a really huge fan of, of the other mill. It's a great little machine. Um, and the price went down actually too, if you want to take a oh, look really? at making custom PCBs. Huh. My God, you can go from traces to your, you know, to soldering in literally like a couple minutes, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. And then just to show this little guy going off. Super cool. And then here's what it looks like with the acrylic on there. Oh, cool. Wow. It looks like a spaceship because of the, the way. So, you know, we wanted to do a simple version before we solder like a hundred of these. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're like, let's just do six NeoPixels. We asked Lamar, should we put caps? As the NeoPixel Uber guide suggests, you should use capacitors on every pixel. Lamar said, you don't need it. It's, there's only six pixels. You don't need that many. You don't need any caps, which saved me some time, milling time, soldering time, and um, routing complexity, because yeah. I'm not that skilled in routing. And you might be wondering, why isn't there a ground plane? Well, Oh, just in case I like uh, bridge any of the connections. Yeah. It just, to me, it looks a little bit cleaner mm -hmm. and it, it helps keep the solder in so it's not just spreading all over your lovely ground plane. Yeah. Just a little it's look really like this acrylic go, on there. Go, go really tight on it. it oh, yeah, yeah. You can really see the there. Uh, yeah. The, the outline of the PCB really gives it that, um, mm -hmm. that hard effect. Yeah. <laughs> it looks so cool. That looks cool too. Cool, so these will be our Valentine's theme projects yeah. for this year. Next, we got to make a mold, and then we got to resin cast. Yeah. And figure all that stuff out. Air bubbles be damned. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have a lot of air bubbles. <laughs> we don't know sorry to do Esther, who's getting all squeamish with the uh, razor blades being all out in the open. Yeah, get that out of here. <laughs> all right, cool. So that's what we're prototyping this week. Yeah. yeah. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's community makes. Yes, sir. Every week we 3D print something from the community. I'm going to put the video. <laughs> um, so this week it's a uh, Mandalorian a blaster. blaster. Yeah. So this was really cool detailed blaster model from uh, Leonardo. Is it Leonardo? Click on the name. I forget the name. Pretty sure that's it. Yes, Leonardo Aguirre from Mexico. Aguirre? Something like that. So he actually put up a very detailed uh, model list for this. So everything is all in little pieces. You can print it out in all the different colors. I took the solid model and just split it in half so I could just paint everything. Oh, cool. Have it printed out in one go. Just took a bunch of little small uh, tipped uh, paint brushes and painted all that in. So oh, it's a little bit more easier. And what's cool is he also has like, um, the, what are they called? The ammunition for this. And I think the oh, yeah. split up model also has uh, like the, the hammer and the triggers all working as well. Oh, wow. I didn't really need all of that. Yeah. So Good I scale. just split this model in two, print it out all in one go, or two goes two actually. Goes. <laughs> no supports, yay. No supports and excellent job on all of the little details in there. Uh, everybody's been going crazy with just getting a bunch of screenshots to I'll print all these out. I think I got the colors pretty accurate there. Yeah, good to me. Seems to be all like a darkish sort of brown. We're using the glittery PLA from everyone. Is it really? Yeah. I thought it was uh, Rapunzel Silver from, it's not. Oh, no, no. Sweet. It was uh, it 20 bucks like on okay. Amazon and it does an excellent glittery job. Glittery silver, y'all. Okay, PLA 175. Mm -hmm. It's on Amazon, I'm gonna guess. Airy one, yes. one. And it came out excellent. Just using acrylic based uh, paints for this. You have some of the shiny, I think copper is what this is. Uh, we need to get some like shiny gold because this is like a little bit more, more duller than yeah. even the black even has a little bit of a shine on it. Or up against yeah. the light there, Ooh. you can see. So just uh, plain acrylic uh, paint that you can get like at Walmart. I believe it's like 50 cents. For okay. A little, uh, little bottle of that. That'll last quite a while. Sweet. So I definitely recommend that for painting. Cool. And you and used uh, uh, the pan of ice to keep it in place. While, yes, uh, I used the pan, pan of ice. Excellent little area right here just to grab onto it. So you can hold yeah. it at different angles. You can get all like the, uh, check out the 
the overhangs right. and all that on there. Yeah, I like this Some approach. No, a little detail. Kind of skips that whole method of sanding for days or whatever. Yeah, I and mean, it depends right on what. It. Yeah, it depends on the finish mm -hmm. of your print. Some finishes look great like this. You quickly Let's want to get your uh, Mandalorian uh, cosplay on. We showed the helmet a couple yeah. weeks ago. All right, let's check it out on Thingiverse then. Perfect little companion. Here it is on Thingiverse. Um, yeah, these are, this is it. This is all we had to work with, these screenshots. Um, does he offer the Tinkercad filing, I suppose? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, and here are all the pieces. Oh, there you go. A couple makes, one remix. Let's check it out. Shout out mm -hmm. to Leonardo. Actually, I think I need to upload the remixed one, so anybody who has the... Uh, Mm, um, like you. a 300 by 300 bed can just print it in half. Oh wow, look at it. Looks really good. Job. Fine it. Yeah, it's some really good. Um, right, maybe sanding is the right way to go. work. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't have like that much time to do it. Super good. That looks really good. Yeah, there. with all yeah. the little things. Super excellent, cool. excellent job. Very yeah. nice. Sweet. All right. Well, we got some other makes. I think we just have one more. Um, that was posted up. This one was hey. posted about Archie or Achi. Um, Achai? Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> Printed on a Prusa i3 MK3S. I'm glad it works out. Um, it looks like this silvery type of thing. And uh, that's awesome. I'm not sure which Pi Portal it is. It's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> it could be the Titano, it could be the original. I don't think it's the Pint, because the Pint has a little bit of a different size to it, right? But otherwise, awesome. Thank you for posting this up. Printed with uh, the filament, Prusa, uh, Prusa's PET. G silver and black. Excellent. Nice. That looks great. Sweet. And that's uh, pretty much all I got this week for Community Makes. If you want to share your projects with us, you can do so in the Discord or uh, just chatting us on the, any of the socials. I'm going to go back to the coupon code, dot matrix. Helps us out and helps you out with your maker habits. Yeah. I think that's going to be it for the show. Let's go ahead and run through oh, wow. the yeah. end of all of the reminders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. So Dumb later tricks. tonight, we have show and tell. Please come on. We invite you to come on to the show and tell. Um, hang out in the Discord chat room. And around 7.20-ish PM, uh, Phil, PT, Mr. Lady Ada himself will post a link to the, to the stream yard. Yep. So you can come in and show off all the cool projects you're currently working on or finished. Uh, we invite everybody who's working on any electronics, 3D printing, sewing, crafting, any making is fair game to show yeah. off. We always like seeing all the cool projects you guys are working on. Yeah. And then right after that, whole hour of Lamar and Phil on Ask an Engineer, we're talking about all of the maker happenings in the world, all the new products coming out, all the new projects. Definitely tune in for that. And there's always a giveaway at the end of the show, so That's right. definitely don't want to miss that. We've got another coupon code as well. And then tomorrow, don't forget to join John Park in John Park's workshop. Where he's working on a lot of cool BLE, uh, HD, uh, HID. HID devices to control uh, a lot of Bluetooth stuff. Yeah. So definitely check in for that. Get your Make Code Minute, your Make Code Arcade Get games as well. Yeah. So definitely tune in every week for that. Yep. He also has some cool um, kind of shop talk ish like product of the week type thing. Yeah, lots really of cool. cool workshop. Oh, I know related. what he's working on. He's working on a Bluetooth heart rate monitor. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, very cool. Excellent. You're watching 3D Hangouts. We do the show every Wednesday at 11 p.m. Eastern, mm -hmm. 11 a.m. Eastern time. <laughs> yes, we are in the Eastern time zone. Yeah. I had some other things I wanted to show. Um, just look at the grab, uh, look at our GitHub CAD parts. I made 3D models for these Stemma buttons, so if you want to use these in your designs, I have a pretty accurate um, drawing of it, 3D model of it. I also have a 3D model of this lovely Stemma soil sensor as well. It has the components all on there. Um, I just didn't get a time to uh, create a 3D um, spinny thing of it, but they're out there. And then if you're doing any circuit diagrams using fritzing, we also have the fritzing in there as well. <laughs> it's in our learn guide. Oh yeah, I also wanted to throw this out there too. The prop maker uh, lightsaber code is now on mm -hmm. GitHub. So if anyone has any issues with it or has some uh, ideas for it and they want to do a pull request, please do so. It is now on GitHub. Um, so it is going to be maintained until the end of time. Yeah, so you can check out 
the GitHub code. It should be working now. So if you have any issues with your lightsaber, check out the new code update. Because, uh, yeah. Just want to snap that back in there. All right, cool. Well, that's going to be it for sure. <laughs> Dot matrix. We're a little bit over time, but whatever. It's fine. Thank you guys so much for joining us on 3D Hangouts. It's always a pleasure. Um, we're going to hang out in the chat room until, uh, until tonight. And remember to make a great, great day. day. See you next week.